Okay, so uh, let's do the big thing today that we need to do, okay? Big question, okay? What is uh, the square root of 36? What is the square root of negative 36? So what's the square root of negative 36i? Okay, you're wrong. Try to give me another one. 6x. No, that's definitely wrong. 6 is wrong. 6 root of i. So then I ask you, what is the root of i? What do you multiply by itself to get i? So you said that i times i is i, and i times i we know is negative 1. So that is not true. What do you think? You have no idea, do you? 1 over i. <laughs> and if we multiply top and bottom by i, we get i over negative 1, which is negative i. So that, that doesn't work. All right. So that's what we have to do. Today, we want to be able to figure out how to find nth roots of complex numbers. And it's very, very challenging. So um, I didn't leave enough space for you to write this uh, in your notes. So what you want to do is you want to go to the very last page, very last page, which is entirely blank. Very last page, entirely blank. Okay, And we're going to say that z is equal to r times the cosine of theta plus i sine of theta. So we can re rewrite complex numbers in trigonometric form. No big deal, right? We've been down that road. See if you guys could tell me this. Yesterday we learned about de Mavre. Z to the nth is r to the nth times good theta times n plus good. So that's uh, what we did yesterday. You guys are pretty good at that. Good work. All right, so you have that in your notes from yesterday. But today, we want to do something different. Today we say that z to the 1 over n power has exactly n solutions. So for example, if I am going to take the fourth root of z, how many solutions will it have? Four. If I'm going to take the sixth root of z, how many solutions will it have? Six. So there's that many solutions that we have to find. Second of all, we know that z to the 1 over n, I can't prove this for you, we don't have time, but you can see the formula, and this is the formula we're going to use today. I've written it on the board in a couple spots so you can uh, reference it. But it is r to the 1 over n times cosine of theta plus 2 pi k divided by n. Excellent question. What is k? We'll get to that in a second. Plus i sine theta plus 2 pi k over n. Where k is equal to close. 0, 1, 2, 3. All the integers up to n minus 1. What? So, suppose we are going to find the fourth root. Fourth roots. What is n? Four. How many solutions are there? Four. But k would be all the way up to three. So k would be zero, one, two, and three. How many integers is that? It's a total of four integers. There you go. Plus by one. Okay, so how about if I'm finding the square root of z? What is the n value? Two. Two. So what are my k values? Zero and one. Zero and one. You got it. Yes, exactly. K just jumps in the formula, but we have to define what it is. So let's try. 
I'm finding the fifth roots. How many solutions are there? Five. What is N? Five. What are the K values then? Four. Yep. Up to one less than what N is. You got it? All right, let's do it. Flip back to your notes. We're going to find the square roots of negative 81i. So the question is, what is the square root of negative 81i? Somebody want to take a guess? 9i. Okay, awesome. That's incorrect. Any other? Was it? Oh, okay. All right, so fine. All right, fine. I don't know. That might not. And you think it's n? Okay. All right, so we're wrong, and we're going to figure out what it exactly is. So, yeah, it's k. So... <laughs> let's find them. First of all, let's find out what n is. If I find the square roots, what's n? Two. Two. What is k? Uh, zero, and one. zero and one. Square roots. Yeah, the one half power. Exactly. Yep. So square roots would be two, cubed roots would be three, fourth roots would be, yep, there you go. So let's now put this into trigonometric form. The number negative 81i is 0 minus 81i in complex form. If we want to place it in a trigonometric form, what two things do we have to find? R and theta. Well, let's find r and let's find theta. How do we find r? Good. Square root of a squared plus b squared. So R is square root of what is A? Zero. Zero squared is zero. What is B? So I have 81 squared. So what's the square root of 81 squared? 81. So R is 81. So now I have to solve for theta. What formula do I use to solve for theta? Tangent of theta is b over a. What is my b value? Negative 81. So what do you get when you take b and divide it by a? Undefined. Where is tangent undefined? 90 and 270 along the y-axis is where it's undefined. Am I referring to 90 degrees or 270 degrees? Why the 270? Because that's where we would be if we plotted it. Very good. So now I convert it to radians. 3 pi over 2. Look at the amount of mathematics that you guys know. That's impressive. Good work. Yep. So when we list the roots, we'll choose to use a variable w. That's what the book chooses to use. We'll say w sub 0, meaning that we are going to choose the k value of 0 to find our first root. After that, we will do W sub 1, okay? Here we go. This is where you have to help me out, okay? We are now going to implement our formula that you see there on the board, okay? R to the 1 over N, so on and so forth. So, what do I have? Which is 81 to the... 1 half power times cosine of 3 pi over 2. Why? And your k value is 0. So, right, the first one ends up to be just theta plus 0 because the k value is 0. So we don't have a cycle of 2 pi. Y2. That's what the n value is. Plus I sine of. Now, let's use this space to do some simplifying for the first one because we know that we know whatever this angle is, that's what's going to go here, right? So 3 pi over 2 plus 0. 3 pi over 2. 3 pi over 2 divided by 2. Three pi over four, right? It's okay. 
Great. Good work. All right, 81 to the one half. Niner times the cosine of. Good work. Good work. Good work. So this is trigonometric form of your complex number. Because your teacher's a jerk, he's going to make you put it into complex form. If we're going to put it in a complex form, that means that we have to find the exact values of sine and cosine of 3 pi over 4. So let's reference what we did earlier this year. 3 pi over 4, how many degrees? It's a 45 degree reference angle, 135 degrees. So that places me right there. What is the terminal point at that spot? They get rid of 2 over 2 and rid of 2 over 2. Very good work. Is the cosine the x value or the y value? x value and sine is the... So I have 9 times negative root of 2 over 2 plus i root of 2 over 2. And I can just distribute that 9 through. And when I do, I get negative 9 roots of 2 over 2 plus 9i roots of 2 over 2. And that, my friends is complex form. Yes, that would be fine if you'd like to write everything in the numerator over 2. That would be fine as well. But when I asked at the beginning, what is the square root of negative 81i, and we took some you know, kind of ridiculous guesses I wrote up here, the fact is at the end of the day, we were nowhere near that, right? In fact, the first time I saw this, I said, I, I don't know if I really trust that. So what I did, what do you think I did to show that I could trust it? No. No, 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 guys. What? What? Let's just think. What? What does it even mean? What? What did we find? You guys are saying great things. So what does that mean? What can I do to this then? If I were. If I would square it, what should I get? Yeah, so I took this, I multiplied by itself, I foiled it out, and I came up with negative 81i. I mean, it doesn't look like it should happen, but it does. Now, now, does is anybody else kind of skeptic and like, I don't think it really works? Okay, then on your own time tonight, multiply it out and see what you come out with, okay? We'll get there. Okay, yeah. So then when we do when we do fourth roots, you multiply it out four times. Question. What? Yep, that, well, you you have to have a one there. You know what I mean? I, I know what you're saying. There, there's multiple ways to represent it. At the end of the day, uh, they really like you to write in the form of A plus B I. So I, the book may write it a different way. Very possible. Good times. Yes, go do your diligence. Good luck. Goodbye. You're not missing anything important anyway, right? So, okay, let's do it. W sub 1. Shh. W sub 1. Here we go. Will the R value change? No. So what will I end up with? 9 or 81 to the 1 half times cosine of? plus 2 pi, all divided by 2. Where did you come up with 2 pi? 2 pi k, and since k is 1, I just have 2 pi. Where did you get the 2? Because n is 2. Okay, plus i sine of, let's try to combine these together. 3 pi over 2 plus 2 pi. Common denominators, 2, so rename 2 pi as 4 pi over, so 3 pi over 2 plus 4 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2 divided by 2, 7 pi over 4. Blake, you had a question? 
So as you look at the formula right here, it says 2 pi k, correct? And our k value currently is 1. All right, so that means that we have 9 times cosine of 7 pi over 4 plus i sine of 7 pi over 4. That is, my friends, trigonometric form. But what do we want? Complex form. 7 pi over 4. How many degrees? 45 degree angle in the fourth quadrant. So good job. 315 degrees, right? So if this is a 45 degree angle, what is my terminal point in that area? Root of 2 over 2. X value positive, negative root over 2, X value negative. It's okay. But, I mean, there's a lot of material here, right? I mean, it's easy to make a simple mistake, so don't feel bad. You guys are, you guys are doing excellent. Uh, so I got root of 2 over 2. Minus I root 2 over 2. That's fine. And we will distribute and get... 9 roots of 2 over 2 minus i times 9, or I'll raise 9i. And that's complex form. How is that different from the first one? Negative. negative. And we are doing square roots, right? So if it's different by a factor of negative 1 and you square it, it does not matter in that situation. Do not get too tricky about trying to predict because when we do cube roots and fourth roots, some of that really falls apart on you, okay? So, you need to do both. Yep. Yes. Okay. How did it change to negative in this situation? Because our it all hinged around our terminal point. Notice that before we came up with 3 pi over 4, which was in the uh, third quadrant or second quadrant. This one was 7 pi over 4, which is the fourth quadrant. So if you look at your terminal points, went from negative root of 2 over 2, root of 2 over 2, to now root of 2 over 2 and negative root of 2 over 2. So those, those were the changes. Just contact questions. No math questions, right? Okay, all right. Let's move along. You guys did great. Let's do the next one, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're going to find third roots of negative 27i. N equals 3. K equals 0, 1, and 2. And I argue that if you can do this uh, type of lesson, I don't think, uh, this, to me, this is the hardest thing that we learn this year in trigonometry. And furthermore, I think you can make it through all the pieces of calculus next year. That's my opinion. Okay? Unless you're wearing a Green Bay Packer shirt. We just there's some poor choices. You can anybody get the guy a different shirt? Okay. All right. R equals. Can anybody see what R is right now? By just it's 27. Yeah. Okay. And then if we were to plot this point, where would it be? It would be down on the y-axis at 3 pi over 2. So notice how quickly we were able to generate our R value and our theta value by simply thinking of how we would plot the point. So now we're already into trigonometric form, which is 27 cosine of 3 pi over 2 plus I sine of 3 pi over 2. Good work. Yo. No, it, not, a dumb, not a dumb question. Negative 27I, so that's 0 minus 27I. And if you were to plot that, you would go over 0 and down 27 units. So therefore, we can see it's 27 units away from the origin, and you can see that you're located at exactly 3 pi over 2. Right? So we kind of showed a couple of those type of examples. You're not going to be able to do that every time, especially the next problem that we do. But right now, you can see that we have three pieces to get through. And that's part of this. On the test, you want to be efficient in your work and not waste a lot of time. So let's get to it. W sub 0 equals... 27 to 1 third, good, times cosine of what? 
3 pi over 2 plus 0. Why plus 0? Because k is 0. Divided by? I thought it was 2. Do we divide by 2? Yes. That's the common mistake that gets made is a lot of times people just continue to divide by 2. You have to divide by whatever n is. Since this is the third roots, we divide by 3. Three pi over two divided by three. Three pi over six, which is pi over two. All right, twenty-seven to the one third. Three. Cosine of pi over two. I sine pi over two. That is trigonometric form. Yeah, we do. Here's comes B roadie. All right, what's cosine of pi over two? Zero. What's the sine of pi over two? One. What's three times zero plus i? Three i, which is your complex form. Think about it, folks. If you take three i and multiply it by itself three times, does it make sense that you're gonna come up with negative twenty-seven i? That's when we probably could figure it out on our own. But the next two, I don't think we really would have had a chance. So, where do I start? W sub 1. We'll just jump right to the 3. Anybody curious where I got the 2 pi? Are we okay with that? So again, our formula says theta, which is the 3 pi over 2, plus 2 pi k. 2 times pi times k. And since k is 1, we have 2 pi times 1. Divided by 3 plus i sine of, let's simplify that, common denominators, 7 pi over 2, good. 7 pi over 6. Very good. Trigonometric form. How are we doing, kiddos? Go ACT. All right. That's trigonometric form. Let's now convert to complex form. Third quadrant, why? How many degrees is 7 pi over 6? 30 degree reference angle, 210. So I'm in the third quadrant, 30 degree angle. What will be the coordinate there for my terminal point? Negative root of 3 over 2 and negative 1 half. Good. So those are my values. Negative root of 3 over 2 minus i over 2. Let's distribute. Negative 3 roots of 3 over 2 minus 3i over 2. That, my friends, is complex form. Quite impressive. What is again? What does that mean? If I were to do what with this? Multiply by itself three times or cube it, I would get negative twenty-seven i. Try it. I dare you. Okay, so we are going to help our two who have just been gone to try to get caught up here. Three, Jill. She knows it. She's good. All right, let's see what we got. B roadie. B roadie. Here we go. Okay. All right. Let's do it, dog. Okay. We are finding the third roots. That means negative 27i to the 1 over 3 power. Whatever that is, that's what n is. Say that, Rach. Furthermore, I choose three values. I choose the three integers that go before three, starting with zero. So I start with w sub zero, w sub one, 
And folks, what are we going to do now? W sub 2. I use this formula that you see here on the board. So we do it three times. We're on our third one right now. So what was our R value? 27. And we raise it to the 1 over 3 power. That's how we came up with this 3. Times. Now is where it gets a little crazier. Cosine of. The angle was 3 pi over 2 that we calculated plus. But Jill, from our conversation, did you did you pick up on what we said K is right now? K is going to be this number right here. So here's what I have. I have my theta value plus 2 pi K. What's that going to come out to be? 2 pi K. 4 pi divided by now it says rach what am i dividing by here n what was n in this problem we said 3 so i divide by 3 very good so let's combine them together okay 4 pi as 4 pi as a denominator of 2 is 8 pi over 2 combined 11 pi over 3, or over 2, so we got 11 pi over 6 rolling here. Good. Good job. So, Jill and Rachel and B. Rohde, we now simplify this through. 27 to the 1 third is 3. Cosine of, we've simplified this angle right here to 11 pi over 6. That is what we call trigonometric form. Complex form. Who can tell me 11 pi over 6, which quadrant? How many degrees? 330. It's a 30 degree reference angle. What is my terminal point there? For 3 over 2, negative half. So minus i over 2, and as I distribute that through, I get 3 roots of 3 over 2 minus 3i over 2. That is complex form. Good question. I have i times the sine of 11 pi over 6. You, got, you good? Okay, fourth roots. We're not going to do all four. We're not going to do all four. We're going to do the first first one, and we'll just set up the second one so you guys can see what happens. Because this one's a little bit unique in that uh, there's just a couple more challenges with it. So, yes, exactly. We have a negative one in front. That makes this problem unique and different. So our first step is to place this into trigonometric form. But before I do that, I'll identify n, and I'll identify my k values. What is n? What is k? And we won't use all 0, 1, 2, and 3. We'll just set up 0 and 1. But what I need to do is I need to find r, and I need to find theta. How do we find r? What is a squared? 1. What is b squared? What? Okay. You guys make excellent points, but we do not square the i. We simply square the coefficient in front of i. So root of 3 over 3 squared is 1 third, because you get 3 ninths. Very good. So, still, n, it comes right here. So because we have four threads, we're choosing four. What's 1 plus 1 third? 4 thirds. So we're going to say R is equal to the root of 4 thirds 
and I'm going to choose to write it for for the benefit of uh, some of the operations. I'm going to write four thirds to the one half power, and I know that that looks kind of gross from what we've kind of done before, but this is going to be useful to us. Yes. It you you don't use the i because as we plot this point, remember that our value is its distance from the center. Correct. So we go back one and we go up uh, root of three over three, which is actually less than one. So it's, it's right about here. So we don't actually use I when we plot it. That just means we are on the imaginary axis. So you don't use the I when you square the value. Okay, better? All right, so we've got that. Now let's set up tangent of theta. Tangent of theta is equal to what? B over A, what's B over A? Negative root of 3 over 3. Uh-oh. Where is tangent negative? Second and fourth. Are we working in second quadrant or fourth quadrant? Second, due to our plotting. Inverse tangent, the root of 3 over 3. Now, if you don't know this value, some of you have memorized it, some of you haven't. But if we go tangent, well, I'm in radians, so mode. Go degrees. Uh, tangent inverse, the root of 3 divided by 3. Whoop, can't do that. There we go. And I get 30 degrees. It creates a 30 degree reference angle in the second quadrant. So what is my angle then? 150. Convert to radians. 5 pi over 6. Very good. Are we now good to go to place in the trigonometric form? What is my... Well, let's first do trigonometric form. So I got 4 thirds to the 1 half power times cosine of 5 pi over 6 plus I sine of 5 pi over 6. Okay. Just because this, this looks kind of gross compared to some of the other ones that we've done. So let's be careful here. So B. Rodden, what do you want to do? W sub 0 is four thirds to the half to the fourth or one fourth. So four thirds to the half to the one fourth. One eighth. You multiply the exponents. Very good. So four thirds to the one eighth power. We'll do it. Hey, here we go. Four thirds to the one half to the one fourth power. Because four thirds to the one half is your R value. Now we have to raise it to the one over N. See it? So that brings us to one over eight times the cosine of what now? Five pi over six. Plus 0, y 0. K is 0. Divided by 4. Y 4. That's my n value. Plus I sine of, oh boy, um, 5 pi over 24. So it looks like what we have is 4 thirds to the 1 eighth. That is our um, value up front, our coefficient, times cosine of that 5 pi over 24 plus I sine of 5 pi over 24. So that is trigonometric form. Now, do you know the exact value of sine of 5 pi over 24? No. You know, maybe what we could do is use our sum and difference angle formulas or our half angle formulas from last unit come up with it. We probably could, couldn't we? <laughs> okay, here's the deal. Okay, unless, unless it's one that ends up right on the unit circle that we practice, like 7 pi over 6, um, we will simply convert to decimal. Okay, so at this point, what I'm going to ask you to do is this is trigonometric form, but as you put it in complex form, it, we really have no choice other than just put it into decimal form. 
So let's uh, change this here real quick. We've got um, 4 thirds, so I'm going to go parentheses, 4 divided by 3, raised to the, and make sure you put parentheses around this, otherwise it'll just take it to the first power and then divide it by 8, which is not what you want to have happen. And if I do that, I get 1.037. And then, do you remember what mode my calculator was in? It was in degrees. I'm definitely going to have to jump back to radians now. Um, the cosine of 5 pi divided by 24, and I get 0.7934 plus i times sine of Point six zero eight point six zero eight eight sure. And the only reason I do it is just uh, the AP exam. Uh, as you guys, some of you guys take that next year for uh, calculus. You have to go to three decimal places, and so, um, so now we'll just distribute through. So I have one point zero three seven times point seven nine three four, and I get point eight. Two three plus and then one point zero three seven times point six zero eight eight and I get point six three one. So I point six three one. So that's the complex form. And again, what does that mean? Now, if we multiply all four times, we get exactly that. So, um, real quick, um, we won't actually do the problem. But if I change it to W sub 1, does anything change with the 4 thirds to the 1 eighth? Okay, so that'll be the 1 eighth. Um, cosine of 5 pi over 6, what changes here? Plus 2 pi divided by 4, so on and so forth. And you could express it in trigonometric form, but in order to get complex form, you would have to convert it all to your decimals. Yep. And so that's that's where you'd be at. And after I did W sub 1, I would do W sub 2, then W sub 3. Would I be done? Because yeah. I would have a total of four solutions, which we said that there are. So you have to put your calculator back. If, yeah, if you need to interpret it for that purpose. So your assignment is 7.6 right here. And uh, because we've had so many interruptions, do the ACT stuff and interruptions, uh, and because you need it, because this is going to be a challenging assignment, uh, you have a work day tomorrow. But folks, uh, these work days are few and far between. Okay, we're at that busy time here. I told you guys, we get 28 instructional days this, this uh, quarter due to all the interruptions for ACT, MCA, AP testing, we lose 20 days. So we, we have to move. We have to get through the material, and that's just the way, way it is. So.